Yeah, because now I'm sharing the screen, so I, I don't see the chat. Uh, well, I can do the chat here. It is now recording. Perfect. Okay. Then uh, let me start, if you can see this. Um, I would like to, to share with you a few ideas about this approach. I have a PowerPoint here, <clears throat> which you are already seeing, which is, uh, it is, I recognize it is a little bit long, uh, but I will try to go fast through it. And of course, I'm going to share this with you. Uh, please remember that when, when I go through these uh, PowerPoints, the idea is that this is material that goes for you so that you can use, adapt, or change, improve afterwards. No? So, and you can delete and you can add uh, slides, etc. So this is, an, uh, let's see it as an example. I will try to go fast through it so that you see more or less what the elements are there. And, uh, and of course, I would like you all to see the, the content and also to try to see the way it is presented, because of course, you are going to be the ones who are going to be presenting and using these PowerPoints afterwards. So this is the first one of a series of PowerPoints, and, and this is the, just a general introduction as to um, the approach, what it is, what are we talking about it, and more or less explaining how do we go uh, through it when we try to promote it. Um, so this uh, is the result of the project that I was working with uh, CTA. No, and of course it presents this as a tool, experience capitalization as a tool for generating knowledge from the field. And of course it follows this idea that we're going to be talking very often of uh, learning by doing, trying it out and seeing how it works. Um, when we talk about experience capitalization, of course, the, the, uh, the starting point is always, why are we doing this? Why should we bother about this? And then the easiest thing is to start explaining that when you go to the field, when you work with farmers or when you work in any development initiative, there are always many problems which you are always trying to solve. No, you work with farmers to try to address their difficulties. And then you realize that many of the things that you are doing, the work that you are trying out is very successful and it works and, and you are helping or you are contributing or farmers themselves are helping themselves. So it works. The problem is that we not always know why is it that it works or what works and what doesn't work, what is good, what doesn't, because we don't always have the time to sit and to reflect about it and to look at uh, what is happening. So this approach tries to, to address these, these uh, limitations. And it builds, of course, on different activities that we always do. We are always describing, yeah. we are always writing, we are always uh, monitoring and evaluating our activities. So building on these activities and building on the things that different approaches that have been working, have been going on, uh, have been promoted in the past. Not like this idea of systematization, which of course, it's very popular in Latin America. Building on all that is that we come with this approach that we call, well, we or different organizations call experience capitalization. Oh, I, and uh, I think. When, when we talk about this, basically what we're referring to is we a process by which we describe, we reflect, we analyze activities in the field so that we can share information with others. And with this process, we don't just want to, to uh, say what you've done, for example, no, but we try to understand why is it that works, what doesn't work, what is good, what is bad, what are best practices, so that we can try to uh, generate new ideas that we can put into practice. Now, so perhaps when we say, what do we mean by experience capitalization? We could summarize it very quickly in generating knowledge, but it is not just generating the knowledge. It's also trying to make sure that this knowledge and these ideas is put into practice so that we can improve and do better in the field itself. Yes. Of course, I said this builds on, on the work of many different organizations. This is not invented by CTA. No, Please don't see it like that. There's a lot of work uh, put together by FAO, for example, recently by GIFRAS. I, I told you about this the other day. And of course, you're going, you have already some of the links and some of the resources which are available online for free. No, so I think there, there's a lot from where we can uh, pick up ideas. 
We put a website with the project, which is still visible. So there's also a lot of uh, theoretical and practical uh, information which you can access. And then I, I wanted to emphasize this idea that uh, when we're talking about experience capitalization, I think it is crucial to, to, to try it out. I, I believe that in this case, something that you're going to be experiencing is that uh, you can learn much more and you can teach much more and you can uh, try out uh, by, by, by doing it and not just by talking about it. No, so at the moment we are just talking about it, but I would really encourage you that when you start working with your teams to simply try it out, I encourage them to, to, to select an experience, to describe it, to analyze it. And I think that is going to be uh, much, much more efficient. So when we're talking about this uh, approach, basically we think of different phases. And uh, I'm going to outline right now the phases very quickly. And I think that in the coming weeks, next year, we are going to be talking about each one of these phases in much more detail. Now, so don't worry if, if not everything is going to be very clear now, but this is just a sort of outline. And as I said, Next, we're going to be discussing this, each one of these phases in detail so that you also find it easier to, to try it out uh, with your colleagues. We start with the first one, with planning. If we think that this is a process, of course, we need to plan it in advance. And planning, we do it just like we do for every, every project or for every activity. We have to start answering these type of questions. So planning means agreeing, what are we doing this for? Who are we doing it for? With whom are we working? When are we working? How are we going to be doing it? No, it is, it is the basic ideas that you identify yourself when you start any activity. Remember that this is not something you're going to be doing on your own. And this is not something which is going to last only a few minutes. No, you, you, you will need a lot of time and, and, and a relatively long period to be able to put it all together. And then, of course, very important is, is the what question, which we have here on the top uh, right. What are we going to be talking about? Which, of course, means selecting what we call an experience. What part of your work you're going to be addressing? Yes? Which is... To my feeling, perhaps the, 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 the most, uh, it, it sounds simple, select an experience, but it is crucial because this is the, the, the activities, the part of your work, which you are going to be analyzing. So it has to be very clear. What are we talking about? I've seen many cases in which we say, we think, okay, I'm going to start experience capitalization, but we are not very good at selecting the focus and selecting exactly what are we talking about and therefore the process doesn't work. So when we think of experience, remember that this may look, uh, sound a bit as a, as a vague word. Experience can be anything. Experience refers to activities, to a project, to a program, to a process, to a specific approach, to a method, to events. We can see experience as any of these ideas. But I think that the important thing here is to highlight that whether it is activities or a project or whatever, it is our own. No, we are focusing on our own uh, participation, our own involvement, our own work. No, so experience is very much a, a personal set of activities, which means that when you are involved in this process, you are looking at the work that you are doing. If you're going to be encouraging other people to look to, to start a, an experience capitalization process, you will be encouraging them to look at what they are doing, their activities, their work. Yes. And of course, it is not possible to look at everything because yeah, we are all involved in a million activities every day. It is not possible to consider everything. So we have to narrow it and we have to focus on something specific. And how to focus. And this is where we come with some uh, a, a, a trick which I still like to emphasize because I learned it in Uganda myself. It was some, some clever Uganda guy who taught me, you should be talking about this, the idea of a unique selling point. And this is 
a, a word, a phrase used by people who do marketing. Uh, when they want to sell something, they really try to focus on that specific characteristic of the product that they want to sell, which is makes it very special for the person whom they wanted to buy, to buy it. And therefore they convince the buyer that they should go ahead and buy it. Now, remember, every time you buy something, you buy it because you need it, because it is something which you don't have, something which you find it necessary, attractive, interesting. So in this case, we, we could also pick on that idea. And if we want to somebody to get the results of our approach or join us in the work, we have to make sure that this is attractive, that it is interesting for them. In order to do that, we have to pick experience, the part of our work, which is interesting for those other people or perhaps for our colleagues. So if I want my colleagues, for example, to join me, I have to offer them something which they are going to be interested in. And therefore I can think of something which is new for example, something they haven't seen, or something which is different, something which perhaps contradicts what people are already saying or, or presents a new ideas, which is different than the old ideas, and something which is particularly relevant, you know, which is really addressing the needs or the difficulties of the people whom I want to work with. Now, so the, when we talk about unique selling point, we talk about this as something which is different, some part of your work, which is specifically relevant for other people, which is specifically different. We don't tell things that everybody knows because if everybody knows it, then we are, they are not interested in hearing about it. So we have to tell, we have to come with new ideas. So when you're going to select an experience, start by thinking what part of my work is new? What part of my work is different? What part of my work is going to present something that nobody else has been doing? I think that your whole experience capitalization approach is going to be better if you are able to focus on that part of your work, which makes you, your organization, your colleagues special no? or unique. And then of course we talk about forming teams and we talk about working together and we talk about organizing ourselves on the basis of this experience so that we can go ahead and along into the, the, all of the activities. Once we, we are planned and ready to go, the next step means that we have to organize information about that particular experience. So we need to identify what are we looking for, we need to collect it, and we need to organize it, structure it, to, so that we know what information we have. Of course, there is different types of information. No, that's something you, of course, everybody knows. We have primary information, we have secondary information. And when we're talking about our work, we have to see, okay, who knows about our work? It may be that you need to read documents or you need to do interviews or you need to go to the field and uh, do focus groups to try to find out this information. But you start by identifying where is this information. As I say here, you select the sources, you collect it, and then you organize it. No, and by organizing, basically what you're trying to do is to try to identify what was the initial situation what did you do as intervention process and what is the current situation? What are the results? Now, so basically what we need to is to, for the experience that you have chosen, try to identify what do we know about this? What do we know about the intervention process? What do we know about the results? And try to see uh, that if you don't know the results, for example, then you need to go to the field and find them or you need to do some interviews or you need to go onto the internet and try to identify where are the sources and what are the what is the information that you need to collect and put together? There are different ways for organizing information. You know, some people like doing timelines, other people like filling templates. 
No, I, I used to enjoy filling uh, tables, uh, sorry, um, as a sort of fact sheet in which you have uh, key items and then you just say, okay, for example, activities, and then you fill activities, uh, participants, and you fill the name of the participants, uh, results, and you fill the name of the results or difficulties, and you list the, the, the difficulties that you find in the field. Yes? So, Repeating myself, we start with planning, and then we start with collecting information about the experience. And collecting it, we organize it all together so that we know what are we talking about, exactly about this experience. And then we go to the third uh, phase, which to my feeling is the most important one of the whole process, which is that we need to try to do an analysis. When we're talking about an experience, we are interested not just in describing this experience, but we're trying to understand this experience. So we need to find ways for doing this analysis. And to me, basically doing the analysis, there are many different definitions, of course, as, as to what is an analysis. But to me, doing an analysis means giving an opinion, saying if this experience is good or bad or better or worse. No, so we have to find a way for doing this. And one way which to my feeling works very well is to try to identify some set of criteria. No, so for example, if I want to say that the experience is good, you would ask me good in terms of what? So I could say, well, it is good in terms of uh, efficiency or it is good in terms of participation or it is good in terms of uh, gender um, approaches. No, and then it makes it easier for me to give this opinion if I say, yeah, in terms of participation, it is very good. But in terms of uh, gender awareness, why it is not so good. Those are criteria. That's how we call them. If we start identifying them, uh, you will see that whatever the method that you use, no, like we have here some methods which probably you are all very familiar. Whatever method you use, if we find a few criteria, it becomes easier to follow this method and to complete it and to, and to give this opinion, which helps us try to say, okay, it is good and it is good because of these and that reasons. When we start looking at the reasons, it is easier to draw the conclusions. Basically, Whatever the method, whatever the approach that you're going to be doing, we start by selecting a few criteria together with a few indicators which help us measure those criteria. And then, of course, try to identify why. If I say the experience is not very good in terms of gender uh, considerations. That was quick. Sorry? I'm saying if we select one of these criteria, and then we say, why do we think it is good or why do we think it is bad? What are the factors that contribute and what are the factors that have a, a negative influence on the results that we see on the field? And on the basis of that, of course, draw conclusions. Yes? The important thing, of course, is to draw conclusions because those are the key ideas, the key lessons, the recommendations that you are going to be sharing with others. And that, of course, goes back to the most important part of why do we do uh, experience capitalization? Remember, we said at the beginning, we do this because we want to generate lessons that can be put into practice. So those come from the conclusions here, the key few most interesting observations that you make and which you can share with others so that they follow them and put them into practice. Once again, it is very important that these lessons and these recommendations are new, are different, are very relevant. If you come and you recommend, oh yeah, you have to do this and that and everybody knows it, then people are not going to be very interested in the work you're doing. No, I am interested in hearing new ideas. I don't want you to tell me something that I already know. Therefore, in the same way, you have to come with new ideas so that people are interested in hearing you. 
Yes. And then, of course, you can see some of the photos that are here on these PowerPoints. Now, these are just examples of how people work around, which are the things that you are going to be doing yourselves when you promote, when you train others. Um, uh, and that, of course, we're going to be talking about in another session, how to go about it, how to make sure that, uh, uh, how to make it easier for people to draw these conclusions, to draw the analysis, et cetera, et cetera. A next step is to document, to, to put everything in such a way so that you can share it. Because of course, if you have the conclusions, you can talk to them, you can talk about them with somebody else, but probably you don't reach a lot of people if you are only talking. So you need to write them down, you need to make a video, you need to share them in different ways. And in order to be able to share them, you need to, to well, to follow some ideas that we call here documentation. No, so basically, finding ways to present the information. It's very important that we talk about here about some of the difficulties because, for example, if you tell me, ah, we are we want to do videos, my first reaction is going to be, yeah, that's very interesting, but I really have no clue how to do videos because it's not my speciality. I, I am not a video filmmaker. I'm not a cameraman. If you tell me, oh, no, we're going to be doing, uh, uh, starting a website, then I will also think, well, I'm not a website uh, a webmaster. I don't know how to do websites. And that is a problem that we all face. If you tell somebody, now you're going to be writing a book, we are all going to be a bit afraid because we know that writing a book is difficult and that we are really not experts in writing books. So, here we take a, a, a bit of a dive into communications and, and, and uh, well, all these uh, different uh, methodologies for which we know what they are, but we are not really experts in it. So how do we go about it? That's something that you also have to consider. The best is, of course, to consider some basic ideas. How can we try to do this? And when we can't, then we need to get extra outside help. But most of the times, we are going to be writing. Many times we do videos, many times we do webinars, we also do audio files, but most of the times we are going to be writing. And you are also going to be recommending people to write. So we could say, okay, when we're going to be writing, whether it is a blog or an article or a book, we always need to follow some basic principles, let us say. And it's possible for you to share some ideas as to how this text has to be. It has to be easy to read. It has to be short and concise. It has to be attractive, of course, and it has to be rigorous. Also, I think it, it helps we are not going to become the super experts in writing, but it helps if we follow some guidelines in the same way. If you are going to teach me how to do a video, I will probably not become the best video maker of the world, but I can do something relatively good if I follow advice and some guidelines. So basically, this is what we're doing here, presenting some of these guidelines and, and presenting some of these ideas on how to go about it. No, we can... Um, well, start with outlines, prepare an introduction, write a draft, revise a draft, etc. No, and, and, and once again, these are things that uh, we can discuss a lot much more in detail. But I mention them here because I think it's very important that we have it clear that this is also part of the experience capitalization approach. You can share some ideas. No, some tips and tricks. I think this is the, the easiest and the most, uh, um, yeah, easiest way to, to, to recommend what to do when you're writing and also what not to do when you are writing. Not like using acronyms and makes it complicated using offensive language, of course. No, you would say this is obvious, but it's always good to remember and to remind our, our colleagues how to go about it. An important thing, of course, is to try to see how do we get feedback from the text that we are writing or from the videos or from whatever we do. No, uh, 
because I think that uh, the more uh, engaged we are with uh, the viewers, the readers, and if we get their opinions, it will be much better to, uh, much easier to improve what we are doing. So, of course, if I uh, prepare a PowerPoint and I share it with you, I would like it very much if you give me feedback, if you think, oh, this is clear, this is not clear, this is ugly, the photo is not uh, sharp, etc. If you tell me all of that, I can improve my PowerPoint. It's the same with any text. No, the more feedback we get, the better it can be and the easier it is then for others to follow it. Of course, the most important thing, no, you, you need to have a document which is nice, which is pretty, which have photos, which is very clear, which is very attractive. That's all very important. But I would say that the most important thing is that it has to have convincing arguments. Because if you don't add these arguments, nobody will want to read your document. So you really have to try to make it attractive, to make it convincing and to present ideas that people want to read. Remember, we are living in this uh, super information age. There are so many things to read online <clears throat> that there is an enormous competition. And if you come with a document which doesn't say interesting things, nobody will read it because there's too much. Well, after documenting, we need to share it. So we need to find out, develop some strategy to, so that we make sure that whatever we have written reaches the people that uh, who we want to read. Uh, and, and that means, of course, uh, trying to remember that we need to reach people. We cannot keep the results of the experience capital, capitalization approach only for ourselves. We need to reach out. If you identify that the work you are doing is great, you need to tell the world as many as possible because, yeah, we, 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 we are not able to do everything ourselves. No, I, I, I was just talking just before I, I, I joined this session, I was work, uh, talking with some colleagues who are running farmer field schools. And they saying, oh yeah, we're doing farmer field schools in Peru, fantastic. And how many are you doing? And then they tell me, yeah, we're doing five. And I'm thinking five farmer field schools, each one of them with uh, let's say 50 farmers, it means that they are reaching 250 farmers. Fantastic. But how many farmers are there in Peru? Millions. So what is 250? Nothing. So if you think of that in terms of numbers, you really have to do something to reach more people. If I cannot do it myself, then I have to find ways of disseminating the lessons that I'm getting and reaching out a much larger, larger number. In order to do this, we have to find where is this audience? What do they want to know? And especially, what would be the products and the channels which are going to help me reach them? Now, for example, if I'm thinking of farmers in Peru, then I would say, well, I need to know who they are, where they are, what do they want to know, etc. But I also need to know what products are going to be uh, help them get the information I'm sharing. And then I might say, well, probably, Internet is not a good idea because farmers over there are not connected. Uh, maybe written documents are not a good idea because uh, they don't read. So maybe I would say, let us go for uh, radio, radio programs. Yeah. While if I'm going to be reaching my old colleagues at CTA, for example, I don't think any of them would be listening to a radio program. So in that sense, radio is silly it would be much better to start thinking of internet or blog post or maybe Facebook or maybe Twitter, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes. And then, of course, comes the part when we are trying to not just make sure that people receive the information, but that people try to put it into practice. That means trying to use it. So what we want is that the target audience uh, puts these ideas into practice and starts doing, following 
let's say your recommendations trying to to um well let's say putting your ideas into practice you know, so that there's more and more of these activities and more and more of the results of course this is a bit complicated because many of the people who will be reading your documents they don't work with you and they are not your colleagues or they are they are not people who are going to be following your orders so it is not that you can say oh do what i'm telling you no so you have to convince them the question is how do you convince them how do you make sure that they are able to not just read but also follow you and then of course we have to think of adoption we have to think of adaptation and we have to think in terms of scaling up now, you all work uh, with farmers, you all work with extension agents, and you all know when you're doing extension that it is not that you go to the farmer and you tell him or her, oh, you have to grow this seed, and the farmer will immediately say, yes, I will do it. Most probably not. Most probably it will take some time. You will need to convince the farmer. You first need to inform him. Then you need to convince him. Then he has to try it, and then he will try it. And then only after he or she sees the results, he's going to start following your ideas. So it is a process. So in this case, it is very much the same. We have to follow the process and we have to make sure that the process is really adapted to each one of the conditions. Because if you just go with recommendations, people are not going to, to be following your advice at all. Yes? And then of course, we need to think of what are those factors which are going to be convincing people or are going to help people follow your advice now if, if you come with a recommendation which means that everybody has to buy very expensive inputs probably very few people are going to follow it because not everybody has a lot of money for uh, uh, expensive inputs no so th th those ideas which of course sound obvious are those uh, which we have to pay attention to when we do our planning, when we do, when we start thinking, how are we sharing? When we start thinking, how are we reaching out to the people? So that, uh, as I said, we make sure that as much as possible, the recommendations are put into practice. No, and then we think, of course, what are the factors that are influencing this, both outside and within an organization? No. Um, well, we, we can discuss this, of course, uh, in detail afterwards, but um, if I want an organization to follow my advice, it will really depend quite differently on how many resources this organization has, uh, uh, what how many people are working there, uh, what are the internal uh, hierarchies, if there's managers who are really motivated to pick these ideas, et cetera, et cetera. So it helps as I said, to identify clearly what are we talking about, where are we, inside, outside, what factors contribute. And maybe we cannot change these factors, probably not, because yeah, I, I don't have the, the authority to assign new roles and responsibilities, for example, probably not. But I can pay attention to them and then I can make sure that these are taken into account whenever we are planning to work with other people. Yes. And then, of course, to develop an action plan that builds on all of this so that we, uh, for example, reach out more people and make, and make sure that these people are able to put the lessons into practice. And then the last uh, element is that we have to uh, make sure that whenever we are working with experience capitalization and promoting it as an approach, we have to realize that it will be better if this is not just a one-time effort, but if, if, if this is, um, well, something that comes again and again and again, not something that is repeated, something that uh, organizations are able to try now and in a few months and next year again and again, and not just once. And this is, sounds quite obvious because probably it is not that organizations are engaged in only one activity or they not only have one experience. I'm sure they have hundreds of experiences and hundreds of uh, uh, programs from where they can draw lessons and share. So it would be great if it would be hundreds of experience capitalization processes. 
In order to do this, of course, we have to think of resources and time and money and uh, all those things that we need for activities to, to continue on the long run. But we also need, well, we need support, we need skills, we need motivated participants, etc. No, so again, these are just ideas that we have to uh, consider uh, as part of a plan. Yes. So this is very, very roughly running what we call the experience capitalization approach and the different steps that are involved in it. Yes. Um, I can share these uh, slides with you, of course. And then, as I said, for each one of the phases that I have presented here, um, I can, uh, we, we have a different session. So then it becomes much clearer how to go about it for, for, the, for each one of these uh, sessions. But I, I just wanted to start now with giving you this overview of what we call with the process and what it entails. You will recognize that many of the things that we are talking here are not new. If I talk about communications or if I talk about planning or if I talk about documentations, I'm sure that you are all thinking, yeah, well, this is obvious. These are things that we are already doing. And I would like to stress that, yes, those are things that you are already doing. So experience capitalization is not something which is really complicated, difficult, or something which is totally alien. I think that experience capitalization is in a great deal something that you are all already doing. It is something that you know about and it is something that you are already doing. So the question is basically, how do we organize it and how do we combine it and how do we plan it so that you build on, on those activities that you are already having in place and perhaps tweak them here and there or combine them or uh, improve them or uh, I don't know, do, it, do them in a little bit slightly better way, engaging different people and then making sure that they work uh, correctly. Now, um, we can, uh, when we go through the, the different elements next, we can also see the different resources. No, so for each one of the, for example, if we talk about documentation, I will recommend you to try this or to go here or to look at these documents online. That's possible. At the same time, when we talk about uh, um, yeah, each one of the of the sessions, you you can also try try it out. No, what I would in, in invite you all is that not just as, as we said from the beginning, not just to talk about experience capitalization, but basically try to do it. And then we can try to do it with us, no, with me with, or with, with this group that we have here. But then I would also invite you that when you start training others and when you start sharing this PowerPoint with other people, you also do the same thing and you try with, with others. And then let's see how it works. Yes. So um, yeah, I've been I've been talking for for quite a bit. We still have a few minutes, so I, I would like to hear from you. And um, of course, this is just a short overview, but just uh, to hear a few ideas and to see how do you think we can uh, continue in in this process. So yes, over to you. Andri, Max. Andre and Edwin were on a steering. Okay, Andre. Okay. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Very well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, York. I. I managed to follow all the presentation. I think, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot to we, we can learn and we can apply on that eh? in uh, 
in a fast uh, network. Mm -hmm. Now, it seems there are many of the CIKM uh, facilitators who has joined. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of them have questions. And also, uh, yeah, it, it's good that we, we finalize the planning uh, for, yeah. for next year about this, given the fact that this is one of the I think most relevant uh, topic in uh, knowledge management to capitalize on experience and on on uh, on activities that we are doing. So maybe some of the CIKMs here have some hot reactions, or or the those from the Pharma Field School network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see a message from Elizabeth. Great presentation. Thanks, Jorg. What about others? So I can see Bebel from, uh, uh, from uh, Cameroon here, uh, Brenda from the Pharma Feed School Hub. Elizabeth from Ufas. Yes. Um, we also have Maureen there. Samuel from Madagascar. I think these are those who are in the CIKM. Any hot reaction? Yes. About this uh, training? Yes, go ahead. Bebel. Thank you all for the presentation. And uh, I'd just like to ask, at the, at the end of the day, when we talk about experience capitalization, what are we expecting uh, from, from farmers or from the target? And uh, how do we know that we fulfilled our objective? Yeah, good question. Um, I would say that uh, the, the approach is not necessarily directed at farmers, but it is directed mostly at, the, at those who are going to be working with the farmers. Now, of, of course, you can also do it with farmers, but, but let us try to put it more simple. What you want from this approach is to be able to identify what works regarding the activities that you and your colleagues are involved for example, we're training farmers. So you want to see what works, what doesn't work. And when you identify those ideas that work, you want to make sure that your colleagues are able to improve them, you are able to put them into practice and that others are able to copy you. No? So what you want is to present recommendations for others to improve. And that means that the work that you are doing, for example, training farmers is going to be better. So you are going to be doing better training, better courses. And of course, in this case, the farmers are going to benefit because they're going to be part of a better course. No? So basically, if, if to putting it simple, what we want out of this process is recommendations that are going to help us improve our work do more, do better, uh, scale it up, reach more people, etc. And those recommendations are going to come from a analysis of the work that you are already doing. So those recommendations are not going to come from the internet or from an expert or from the theory of the university. The idea is that they're going to come from you from yourselves by focusing, by analyzing the work that you are already doing. This is what we call experience capitalization. And that's why we are calling it experience because it builds on the work that you are already doing. Yes. And of course, what I would like and that the whole purpose of this initiative is that you are going to be uh, trying it out and encouraging other people to try it out. So it is meant for you to start a capitalization process and for you to train others so that others are also able to start a capitalization process. 
Yes. I think there's one hand raised. Is it Edwin? Oh, yes, that's me. Yes. Uh, thanks, 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 Judge, for the wonderful presentation. I've been, as you're going through the presentation, I was looking at our context within the field schools hub, mm -hmm. where we, we have uh, different implementation arrangements from one region to another. And a case in mind is one where the processes have been followed, but with no uh, tangible results. But another one where the processes were not followed and you can see a lot of uh, benefits. So I was looking at this. If you were to do to that, go to that analysis stage, mm -hmm. we will disqualify the first group because they did not deliver, whether it was on production or so and so. But the second group never followed the process. They are busy in business. Everybody mm -hmm. has benefited. Mm -hmm. That is my greatest challenge now. Mm -hmm. Over to you. Yeah, well, you're raising and then another important issue, which we're going to be talking when we talk about analysis, that analysis is not just looking at success. It also means looking at failure, looking at the things that don't work and looking at the things that work, but which were not planned because that happens many times. There's a drawing which I'm going to find and share with you of, um, I don't know how, how is it, but there, there's a drawing of, of a project which makes a difference between the project which is always presented in a, re, in a straight line, no? that you plan here and you finish here. And most of the times we think that we go straight from the planning, implementation, results, impact. But if you realize in real life, it never goes like that. In real life, you plan and then you end up doing something different. Or you plan and it doesn't work. Or you plan and you end up totally going around like this until you come here to the results. And many times it happens that the results have no relation to the plan because the results come from something else. I think that all of that is part of the experience. And all of that are the things that we need to try to analyze and to try to understand. Why? Why is it that what you started here didn't work? Why is it that it worked here, but it didn't work there? Why is it that these people are having fantastic results, which have no relation to the work that you are doing? So that is what we need to, to focus on. And by focusing in detail there, we are going to try to come up with these lessons that I was just saying before. And on the basis of those lessons, come with recommendations that we can make sure that next time you may go in a better line and next time it's going to be much, much better. Yes? So, of course, nobody wants to, to start looking at failures and nobody wants to say, oh, I did it so wrong, I did it so wrong. No, that, that, that's not the point. But the point is trying to understand what works, what doesn't work, so that we can improve it. Yes? Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a very interesting yeah. exercise, especially when we come to the analysis. I remember having done that with uh, Jorg. Yeah. We have to find a lot of yeah. indicators first, or parameters first, on yeah. which angle do we do the analysis? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Um, how, how do we move forward now then? Uh, maybe the fir one first thing is normally each country fora uh, in the AFAS network should do a summary of uh, what uh, beyond the, 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 the quarterly or uh, yeah, the, the, the uh, monthly or quarterly reports. They should do some summary of what went well and the progress that uh, Oh, I lost you. It happened, or maybe also the failures during the thing that we can do is to do our exercise by ourselves this year and next year after the trainings, because we'll go through, I don't know how many set of trainings, then we will do the same thing, but for next year, and we will compare how we've performed in terms of experience capitalization. I think that's, that's one exercise that we can start envisaging because in any case we have to, to capitalize what we've been doing, but it's the methodology and, 
and the way we do it that will be very different eh, when we have the skills and the tools. Yeah, it to be very different, I, I presume. So, well, yeah, I, I we want I, to improve our. I, I think yes. it's a good and good idea, Andre. If all of you can during these uh, days or before the next time we meet, you can start thinking: What would you like to talk about? What would be your experience? No, and uh, and then you can of course think of of these reports that you are already producing or these uh, analyses that you are already doing. So let us select some case, each one of you, and then when we go through the next sessions, we can try to go deeper into the cases themselves as a sort of practical exercise. I think it's going to be more interesting if we try to be as practical as possible. Of course, it's a bit difficult in this setting, but as much as possible. No, by looking in detail at the work that you are already doing. And then we just need to, to plan it so that in each of the sessions, you will be looking at the work. Yes, I can share with you this PowerPoint and uh, I, I'll send it to you immediately. And then I would like all participants also to look at the resources which I sent on the first document I shared with you. No, because all of them are online. So it's very easy for you to just click and then try to see whenever uh, you can to try to read this and, and see uh, so that you get a little bit more information uh, as a general background. And with that information, we will be uh, even uh, more ready to, to do the next sessions. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I saw, uh, I think Max raised his hand or, and there is a comment from Elizabeth. I Please had, I had raised, but I, 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 I was withdrawing for the end, but uh, now that I am here, oh, okay. first of all, I think I'm the most excited person again, you know, B because uh, I have gone to a small dose of uh, experience capitalization, but now looking at the overall outlay and the picture of what we're going to be, uh, I think from from my limited uh, M and E uh, knowledge and work, also it is very very critical. But also for us as as a network, this is a long-awaited thing because if we do this practically and try to document i mean uh capitalize what we've done in afas with the new with the new things uh, i i'm i'm sure we'll sh we shall have value and with all our country fora uh including you know you're trickling my brain on issues of writing you know being precise and what that, that was very very motivating to me so I, I i i didn't even shake from my chair so i was every time paying attention that i'm again in a very good class or a forum where uh, you know professional writing as well is triggered and 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 i think uh, like i mentioned uh th this would be very useful for all our teams definitely and also for me and Andre, I think he, we could just have this capitalization for AFAS, a, a session where we really document just AFAS itself uh, from a new point of view, uh, the innovations. How was uh, this has never been done? Even people are struggling to understand what a country forum is. So if we have these sessions and we just capitalize on country forum. What are they? Why are they there? How? What are the successes? What are the failures? How to move forward? Yeah. Is a good deal. Is a, a clear deal to to work on. Yeah. As I said, I, I will send you this uh, PowerPoint, and uh, I will also send you the links again so that you can share with everybody. And I would encourage everybody to well, what you're already saying on the, on the chat also to to go look get more information and then prepare ourselves by uh, for for the next sessions so it is just a question of planning next year when do we meet how often what day etc but i'm happy and i'm sure that we're going to find a way to do it and by the way i we, i need first before sometimes when you are in the speech you forget well, we need to recognize very highly uh, Professor Swani is in the in the room. Mm -hmm. Professor is a senior colleague in the extension, and uh, is a, 
is the founder of uh, Surfers with Andres and the rest. Okay. So it's it's nice to have such a person in this in this room. Sure. Welcome, Prof. It is my pleasure to be in the room. I I want to thank you, Max, and the organizing committee. As I was perusing through, I realized that George is in the podium. So I decided to join the meeting and I found the meeting so exciting, especially when George said these are not new things that mm -hmm. made my eyes to open wide and of course i join at a later stage i didn't benefit in the beginning but when you started to talk about the writing uh, perhaps let me just open my my video so as you started talking about writing, as Max has commented on, I was also very excited because that professional writing, sometimes we forget about it and we just use whatever comes our way, the acronym which we don't even think about. <laughs> Others will take note of them and we just continue and confusing our audience. Uh, I did not mean to make a speech, but I just want to say I have enjoyed the lesson and continue to do the great job. Uh, the both coordinators, Andre, thank you for being there, and Max and George and the participants at large. Thank you very much for welcoming me. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I I I agree with you with this about writing. It's it's a problem, not just you, I think everybody, all of us. Huh? So I think it's also important to go there in detail. So as I said, in the next sessions, we're going to be looking at each one of these steps with much more detail, with more time, and then we can also discuss and share much more ideas. Um yeah, so I'm I'm also looking forward to to seeing you again. Um yeah, we, we, so, we need to finish. Yeah. So Andre? the question now yes? is, yes, we need to close this. So the question now is, how often do we do the training? Is it twice a month or oh. or every once a month? How, how, what is the speed that you recommend? I would, uh, I think ideally we could try twice a month, every two weeks. Um, with the proviso mm -hmm. that in between, of course, you can also be, uh, let's say, doing some sort of homework, you know, uh, looking at more documents, trying to put some ideas on paper. Um, I think we could do something like this every, every two weeks. Uh, no, le le let us try. Let us see. Of course, I know everybody's busy. I will also be very busy. Um, so sometimes it is not possible, but yeah maybe once every two weeks is ideal if we, if we do it longer then it if we take more time then i i think uh, we all forget no it, it becomes yes. a bit lost no and if yeah. we do it a bit too often then everybody's too busy and and there's no time to do anything so i would suggest let us do it once every two weeks mm -hmm. um so yeah. maybe starting mid-january yeah and one in mid january and then another one in uh, end of january in, uh, end of january or beginning of february yeah so yeah. if i remember it is about uh, three four sessions and eh, that we have yeah. to plan we we can do more if that is not a problem you know let us see i would say let us see how about how we go we could eventually make eight sessions every two weeks Mm -hmm. we could do six uh, it, it really depends on on how much time you want to invest on it uh, if, if we say we take one hour only we could do it uh, a bit uh, expanding it more on time yeah the, i i yeah i think uh, one hour is good it, it exactly so we don't need to make it longer and heavier what i yeah. think it's important is to make it light to make it participatory but also to make sure that uh, 
it is not just this session, but that you also have the time to go looking for additional information, to look at the PowerPoints, to look at the websites, to whatever. No, because the more mm -hmm. you get engaged and also mm -hmm. doing it a practical, the more you do it yourself, the better the course is. Yeah, and it will be an applied training, yeah. eh? so yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything that we learn, we need to apply immediately exactly. during the next two exactly two weeks. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So from my side, thank you very much, uh, York. Yeah. I think this is going to be a very nice. passionate journey for next year. Nice. Yes. And uh, wish you a, a happy new year and Christmas mm -hmm. also. Yeah. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Andre. And thank you so very much, uh, York, for the partnership and uh, moving forward. Yes. Being, being a friend, that, that, that makes even more, more, much more better. But uh, we, we can't be here if there are no participants. I think this has been a very wonderful beginning with the, mm -hmm. all the team that was able to join. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are likely to have more joining. Malawi is having an event right now, so they couldn't join. Uh, Nigeria is also planning, so but we shall ensure that the CIKMs, who are going to be helping to write even the reports from the country for including some focal point persons, actually listening to you, they need to participate. Mm -hmm. It relieves me and Andre and Jerry in terms of getting back to them in, in, in writing concise, appealing relevant reports so if we all go through this this training i think our our our, our writing our reports uh, and other documents will have improved uh, dramatically so i i will also encourage my colleagues uh, like jerry who is on in, on the m and e to be very keen to this process and of definitely andre on, on, on knowledge management so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much. We have agreed uh, uh, we shall continue in 2021. And uh, mid-January, Andre and myself, we shall agree on which date then we communicate early enough. So, Perfect. having said that, we again want to wish all of